Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. Hope you're having a great day, and I'm excited to share with you my latest learning process. So there's a gentleman that was keeping his Roadrunner Pro, if I understood correctly, based on his experience, again, if I understood correctly, it seemed that he was understanding himself and his experience to be keeping his scooter charged. And it wasn't easy for me to understand, but I think he was using the old style bicycle um, lights, uh, generators. So I bought one. Now they may all be made differently, but I'm going to see how many uh, different designs. One moment while I help the sound to be better here. <clears throat> okay. When the engines start up at uh, those combustion engines, we hear it. And then, and then the smoke comes in here too. The unburnt fuel. We don't want that. Going back to the clean energy here. That's right. Even if 100% of the electricity comes from coal to power your electric car, it still pollutes one half as much as driving a gas car. And that's just on the processing of the fuel and the burning of the fuel. Okay, so on this... Uh, little generator here which is a light it's I'll call it a light generator right this is a bell this is a B-E-L-L -L design if I understand correctly if I recall correctly and it was quite interesting to learn the way this is made look how different this is I haven't seen a generator like this before now if you look here these four are all connected right these two so this one here, let me set it down. So, this one, these two, and these two are all connected. It's one piece of metal. And then these two, and these two right here, as you can see here, are all connected, right? And then this has, I just checked with my meter, with my magnet polarity meter. This has four south poles and four north poles. So south, north, south, north, south, north. Now, what does that mean here? It means that, let's look at that. I think what it means is all of the norths will be hitting this same bar, and all the south will be hitting the other bar, and then it'll switch. All the norths will be hitting the other bar, and all the souths will be hitting the other piece of metal at the same time. This is, this is significant. This is very big. What is the magnet doing? How is it interacting with the metal? These, this metal could be metal or it can be coils. In this instance, it's the metal, and then the metal is transmitting that polarity to this coil, right? And then let's look how the coil's wired. One end of the coil goes to this. It just had the one wire, right? Now this is 6 volts at 3 watts, but I was spinning it connected to the wheel of the scooter and it was giving me, uh, I was up to 30 volts. And that's because I was probably spinning it faster than it's, than, uh, I don't know, faster than it's, than the test originally was done with. Where we're getting 6 volts. Maybe 6 volts is when you just turn it real slow. Um, so, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about this. And I'll tell you something. The guy, the gentleman is on the, uh, if you want to locate what he's what he's doing, he's on the the new, I don't know the exact name of the, of the group, but it's like the new Roadrunner Pro group. And he's just, just as is typical, this is just how it is in our world, is uh, everyone saying there's no such thing as perpetual motion and people are making fun of him and saying all these things. And then he comes back using a little bit of frustration, maybe coming across as with using a little bit of curse words. And he's saying, look, it works, you know. And the, here's the thing. It's so important to not feel like you have to prove anything to anyone. I think it was quite generous of the gentleman to share his experience. And I'll tell you something. Not only are people accidentally stumbling upon self-charging systems every day, if you want to call it perpetual motion, you can call it that, um, but perpetual motion, not by the definition that's on the internet, but rather the definition that is the experimenter's definition, which is if we're putting less energy into something and getting more out, 
I think every exper experimenter I've spoken with says that's to them they're satisfied with that definition of perpetual motion. Not the unrealistic um, definition of perpetual motion on the internet, which which means that the bearings aren't allowed to ever wear out. No part can ever wear out. It has to keep going forever. I don't know of one experimenter that has ever claimed, not for a moment, to expect that of any mechanical system. So the only thing that actually is perpetual, as Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize winner, said, is the perpetual electron. It's a fundamental particle. It can't break down to anything else, and it just it exists forever. The electron is literally in perpetual motion. It's, a, it's perpetual. So nature has achieved it, and maybe someday we can replicate nature. But meanwhile, until then, we can settle for, I'm happy to settle with, a system that I put a little bit of energy in and get a lot of energy out. That's because we have megawatts, as Richard Feynman, the Nobel Prize winner and professor at Caltech for many years, and also Princeton's John Wheeler, as they both acknowledge, and many others acknowledge as well, many other of the greatest minds in the world, that there's megawatts, millions of watts of energy in every cubic centimeter of space, every small piece of space in the area of a teacup, an empty teacup, in that space right there, in the teacup, there's enough energy to power the whole planet without end because space just replenishes itself instantly. Once you use that energy in that space, it instantly replenishes itself at 10 to the 120th times cycles per second versus our 60 cycle per second systems, right? Yeah, we're at very, very slow uh, speeds here powering our houses. Nature is the example that we are aspiring to. So I just wanted to point out what I'm noticing here. And some of my thoughts, my initial thoughts may be, what if we put actual coils here, right? And what if we actually put a, um, I mean, look, this doesn't even have a bearing on this side. There's nothing holding this. It just spins in the air. And, and I think there might be one bearing on this side, and that's it. I would hope that's a bearing. I don't know if it's a bearing or a bushing. This is a bell. It said bell on it, on the package. So this may be considered one of the better made systems. Um, uh, but anyway, the gentleman was saying, if I understood him correctly, he w I think he was using one of these generators to charge a small battery. And when I see what's happening here, and I think of John Bedini, Thomas Bearden, Ralph Ring, and all the guys, all the gentlemen that, that were uh, experimenting with these, with, with uh, what, what um, John Bedini called radiant free energy. Um, it makes me think of this, where the coil, where we're hitting four, we're hitting four pieces, these could be coils or pieces of metal, at the same time with the same polarity as we're hitting the opposite coil with the opposite polarity. So it's like a strong hit and then the opposite hitting both ways at the same time and it's hitting the same coil. This is one coil getting hit, right? It's getting, this one coil is getting, getting uh, pulsed from two different sides. One side is the inside and this side. And the other one is, let's, let's look at this closer. It looks like these two pieces of metal do touch each other. See right there, it looks like they touch. Right there. So what seems to be important is that it's not that they're isolated from one another, possibly, right? I mean, isolating them may make it more effective, maybe it can make it more powerful, but is that we have, we're pulsing the same piece of metal on opposite sides, right? The majority of this piece of metal. So this piece of metal, this piece of metal on all four sides, right? All four areas is on the outside of this coil and on this side. The other four pieces of metal that connect together are on the opposite side and the inside. See what's happening? So this one goes top, right, top and back side, and this side, this piece of metal goes this side and inside. And I think that's what allows that impulse. Okay, this, I think this is an impulse generator. This may very well be an impulse generator. If that's what it's doing, then it makes sense that it's shaking the electrons loose from the Dirac, D-I-R-A-C, study particle physics, 
that's what Thomas Bearden said. He said, we got to not just study electrodynamics. All those people that are making fun of that gentleman that's sharing his experience, it sounds like they've only studied a very specific perspective, maybe one that's taught in school specifically very clearly. Because I think school does touch on free energy and uh, perpetual motion, not by the uh, internet's definition, but as, by, by the experimenter's definition. I think it's touched on, but it's never necessarily clarified what you're learning. Uh, that's based on my research and study. I could be wrong on that, but I'm trying to I'm trying to give education the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that school is intentionally trying to hide anything from you. It's just that school may take a long time to catch up with all the knowledge and discoveries that we have made. I mean, look, NASA. I don't know if NASA is experimenting with electrogravitics, and we've had electrogravitics since. How long has it been? When did John Searle first start experimenting with electrogravitics? I mean, this is the way we can actually travel to other solar systems and other galaxies and other universes. I mean, we're talking about going to Mars and how how long does it take to get there with with our rockets? Electrogravitics can go, if I understand correctly, can go 27 to 100 times the speed of light. And now we're talking, it has a force field around it that protects us, right? And we weigh one half the weight that we weigh now here on Earth. So we can take sharp turns and we don't even feel it, right? No effect on us. And we can't crash in those. If you crash, it just kind of bounces away. As uh, Russell Anderson was explaining, an infinite energy from the vacuum. There's a video called, it's on YouTube, called Infinite Energy from the Vacuum, if I recall correctly. And Russell Anderson really gets into great, a great introduction and a great description of of, uh, the, of John Searle's work. And many other uh, efficient energy systems. And he says in that video... You have to ask for this. You have to demand it. He says you have to demand it. And I would call it just asking persistently. And, and yeah, we can call it demand. What is demand? We can, we can say we want something. We can say we need this. We want it and talk about it. Uh, as long as we keep saying the old dialogues, though, if we just think, oh, this is all that we have is all that we'll ever have at the most, and that's it, then, you know, if you know if that's if that's satisfying to to a person myself i'm interested in what are the boundaries of knowledge that we can explore right what's the edge of what we can understand and then then what's beyond that and what's beyond beyond there's no end to it really truly so uh that's just my interest and in i've always uh thought that way since i've began to think so, uh, I mean, my first thoughts were, what is thought? I'm thinking right now, how interesting is this? What can I do with it? Right? And I'm like one and two years old. So, of course, uh, I was taken to a psychologist and evaluated, and this, luckily the psychologist said, um, you have a very intelligent a young man here, but have you had yourself checked out? <laughs> and that's to the person bringing me in. So, that happened to be... The parents. So anyway, going back to the um, this experiment here, I'm happy to share with you what I see here. And the gentleman on, on in the group, and I don't recall his name at the moment, but it won't be hard to find him if you go to the, the Roadrunner group on on, uh, on Facebook. And it's one of the groups. I don't know exactly the exact name of that particular one, but it's one of the new users groups. But he's talking about using a generator from the bicycle. And I can see how this is significantly different than a regular motor or a regular generator. This is different. I could see how this could work. And it's not about how many amps this is producing. It's the way that it's interacting with the zero-point field, virtual particle flux fields, gravity waves tachyon waves, dark energy, dark matter, whatever you want to call it, right? You can call it whatever you'd like to call it, but this is interacting with space. And uh, anyone that says you can't get more energy out of something than you put in it is ignoring that there's energy in space, right? I mean, that's just what it looks like to me. Uh, you know, I could be wrong. I, people have to speak for themselves. I'm just telling you that I'm study, I study everything. I study all the different points of view and perspectives. And I don't study people who say you can't do things. I don't study that. I'm interested in what we can do, not what we can't do. If someone says you can't do something, why would I study more about how to learn, how to not see? <laughs> I apologize, but I, I also don't apologize. I'm not trying to be rude here. I just want to learn. 
Okay, I have the right to be happy, to pursue happiness. This makes me happy. That's one of my rights. That's one of your rights, too. Okay, so... This is very interesting. Very interesting. I'm so excited right now. I just love learning. Many people say that if you've learned, you have not failed. You only fail if you haven't learned. Anyone that walks around saying you can't do things, I hear them saying they don't want to learn anything else. Because if you want to learn, read more. Read Don Smith's, uh, Rick Friedrich's book on Don Smith's life work, Magnetic Resonance Energy Crafting Systematic Index. Read all of Thomas Bearden's work. Read all of John Bedini's books. Read John Searle's books. Read, watch John Searle's uh, uh, documentary on the Searle Effect Generator that we were just talking about. It's a drive system to go faster than the speed of light. Uh, he built 47 of those, those ships for people that had people that had the money. So it wasn't commercial, it was just private people that had money and they paid them to build these and they, they funded it. So this was done a long time ago. Where do you think those ships are now? Yeah, they're improved, they're perfected, but they're not public. So I guess we have to build our own ships, which is fine with me. If I, 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 want, I want to make my Dualtron Thunder 2 uh, gravi gravitate above the ground. I want to do that. So I'm, that's part of the research here. I'm working on it and I'll share my journey. You'll get there before me, though. I'm like the slowest learner. I learn so slow. So if you just even pay attention to, to, if you just pay attention to any of these subjects for like five minutes, you'll probably be at the, already be there and have, I'll be watching your videos tomorrow of your scooter hovering around space. I mean, it really is that. I mean, to me, I just, I, I, I the way I learn, I just, I've noticed, I just, I, I have so many questions and I, I really, you know, people go so much faster than me when with learning and that's okay with me I, you know I'm, a, I'm on my own journey here my own path uh so let's see yes i am thinking about how to improve this how to vary it how can i how can i improve this let's see what we have so far so i'm noticing too that this shaft does not this is very important this shaft does not enter into this Okay, that matches what John Bedini said about, about these kind of systems. You can't have a ferrous metal inside the area of, if I understood him correctly, you don't want the ferrous metal going through certain designs. And I'm guessing that's why they didn't send that, that shaft through here and into a bearing. I'm, I'm just guessing, because they could have easily done that, right? But they didn't. Oh, I'm so excited right now. I hope I can do something with this. Even if I can, I'm still happy I learned this. Okay, going back to the gentleman that, that was doing his experiment. If I understood him correctly, he had a... Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like... They make them that plug into the cigarette lighter, and it converts the 12 volts DC, direct current, into 110 or 120 volt AC. And I think he was... He had that connected to a small, maybe a 7 amp hour, if I recall correctly, 12 volt battery. And that battery was powering his little uh, converter. Now, please confirm this for yourself. If you can find that group, please confirm this for yourself. I'll, put, I'll try to put a link to the group uh, if I can. I'll try to put a link to it, the Facebook page. But you're just going to see people blasting this guy. And it's normal. That's why I turn my comments off on my channel. On this channel, on True Zero Emissions, it's the same thing. But I have a lot of people that are positive too. And they're like, yeah, you can do all that. You can do it. And they're like, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And it's great. But, you know, getting blasted by people, it's just irrelevant. It has nothing to do with anything. I just feel like they're asking me to do homework for them. I don't have the time to explain to everyone that just wants to attack someone how to learn. It's our individual jobs to find a way to be inspired, to be interested, to learn beyond what we know, and to take into consideration such, such things as Einstein's quote when he said, a true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination, or imagination is more important than knowledge. These are two separate quotes. So, and it's said in many different ways, right? So, um... What shall, we, what shall we build today? What shall we make today? What shall we create today, right? Okay, so what this gentleman, I think, if I understood correctly, he was using one of these, and I don't know how many different designs there are. Are they all variations of this, like similar to this? I don't know. 
I know some of them are metal. This one happens to be plastic, right? Which probably helps it not interfere with what's happening here, right? I think that's important, right? Because if this was metal, then it would be acting as a conductor, right? And it might let this be less effective. I was getting 30 volts out of that. Look in the videos I just made. This video is probably going to take days to upload. The last video I uploaded took like five days to upload. I couldn't believe it. It's embarrassing. I apologize. But sometimes my videos load really fast. Sometimes they load in minutes or hours or the same day. But other times they take days and I don't know why. I don't change any of the settings on my phone. It just literally is a significant difference in the time it loads. So that's okay. I'm just glad they get up there, right? I'm glad they're getting up there. I just apologize it takes so long, everyone. I'm doing my best here. So... um. Uh, what the gentleman was doing was he had this connected to his the wheel on his uh, I, on his Roadrunner. If I understood correctly, it was on the Roadrunner Pro. Highly recommend that scooter. Go get one. I just saw a, a preview of this gentleman ri uh, riding his skateboard. I think I don't know where, real far. Uh, and he made a documentary out of it. And this guy had depression, PTSD. It said he survived many war wars. I think they said the movie was called Carrie, but double check that for yourself because I'm not sure that's the name of it. I tried to find a, the, the trailer on YouTube. I didn't see it. I was getting a bunch of other things. But one of the words that were used, and I've read this a few times, is um, I think it's called ele electric Prozac, right? Because Prozac's a, it's for depression, for treating depression, right? I think it's used for that, for, for depression. That's one of, the, one of its uses, I think. And when someone says electric, it's my electric depression, I think that's what they called it. They're referring to like micromobility, right? So it could be like a scooter, a skateboard. It could be any micromobility, a bicycle. That's micromobility, right? And it's people that they bought, and a lot of people are buying the Roadrunner Pro specifically because you can sit down on it. It's a great size. It's like the perfect size. I mean, Voro Motors created this masterpiece and you're getting like a $4,000 plus dollar scooter for under $3,000. I think it's close to $2,500 right now. It's like $2,595 or something on sale. And it beats $4,000 electric bikes. It, it, it was beating the Suron. There's a race on YouTube where they're racing. And I think whenever it didn't beat it, because it beat it in most races, like like 80 or 90% of the time, or almost 100% of the time it beat it. When it didn't, I think it's because the front wheel is just burning out, like it was spinning freely, because it has two-wheel drive, right? Front and back wheels move on the, on the Roadrunner Pro. And it just, you know, the front wheel just spins, and you're not pulling forward as hard as you could if it was uh, getting traction, right? And... Um, uh, just as a thought experiment, I my mind goes to wow. I'd sure like to get the 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 Wolf King GTR front and rear motors. Those tires, I love those tires on the Wolf King GTR, and they're self sealing, self healing tires. That's one thing I would like to see on the Roadrunner Pro. I don't think it has self sealing, self healing tires. They did make it split rim, which I love that. I love it. That's wonderful. That scooter is a masterpiece. You know what? It's going to keep getting better, too. It's already so great. I would have never known they would have gone that far with that scooter. When you look at the first version, they have V1, they have version 2, and then this Roadrunner Pro is unbelievable. It's like next level, beyond, beyond, right? Okay. Um, this gentleman, going back to the gentleman that did that did this charging system, right? We can call it a range extender right now, but I think he was saying that when he rode it, it just kept the battery charged. But here's the questions. How fast are you riding? How much, how fast are you draining the battery? I think what he was doing was, is, so he had a little battery, a seven amp hour battery that was powering the inverter, which, which lets you use a charger, right? The inverter can let you use a charger. And hang on one second. Let me just put this on focus. Oh, I got, okay, I got to go right now. Um, I apologize, I have to interrupt this video. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Uh, so the in, so 7 amp hour battery, or just a small 12 volt battery, that powers the inverter, the inverter, which converts 12 volts DC into 120 volts AC, right? That, I think, was running a charger that was charging his scooter while he was riding it. I think that's the way it was working. And then this generator was keeping that little 12-volt battery charged. I think that's the way he was doing it. 
my research and study indicate that not only is anything possible, not only is anything inevitable, if his system doesn't work when you if you, when you're riding, if it doesn't keep the battery fully charged, it might act as a range extender possibly, which I'm happy with. Um, what else? Also, if it doesn't work, and I believe the gentleman that it does, if he made it work, I, b I believe that, I'm open to it. And I'd like to replicate it myself and see what happens. I'll share my results with you guys, I'll share it. But I, I wanna explore what he's done. And uh, it'd be great if more people just said, hey, I wanna replicate that too, can I try too? And these are my results and share people's notes. That's what's important. I challenge everyone to do that. Instead of calling names and making fun of him and telling him what you learned in school that contradicts what he's saying, just say, how can I do that? I'm interested. Be interested in learning. And then take it to school and share it with your teachers and see if they're interested. See if they care. I think they would. My teachers were always interested in, in what I was doing. My teachers were always interested in what I was doing and they always encouraged everything I thought about. They were encouraging, they encouraged creativity and this is creative. Learning is a creative process. Okay, everyone, I'm going to wrap this video up. We'll see you in the next one, okay? Uh, True Zero Emission signing off and have a great day.